Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make a black forest cake. So let's get started. First, preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Then prepare three 9-inch round cake pans. Grease them with non-stick cooking spray. And dust them with cocoa powder. Just keep shaking and tapping the pans until they're covered in the cocoa powder. Then tip out any excess and line them with a circle of parchment paper and set them aside for now. Then to make the chocolate cake in a medium bowl add in the flour, baking powder, baking soda, and salt and whisk them together until they're well combined and set them aside for now. Then chop up the unsweetened chocolate into small pieces and add it into a small bowl along with the Dutch processed or special dark cocoa powder. You can just use natural cocoa powder but the cake might not be as chocolatey. And also the boiling water. Then mix them together until they're well combined and smooth and set it aside for now. Then in a large bowl, add in the softened butter and brown sugar and cream them with an electric mixer on a medium low speed for five minutes. And add in the eggs one at a time, mixing really well after adding each one. Once the last egg is added, cream the mixture on a medium-low speed again for another two minutes. And add in the sour cream and vanilla extract and mix them in until they're well combined. Then alternate adding the dry ingredients and the chocolate mixture. Start by adding a third of the dry ingredients. Mix it in by hands just until it's combined. Add in half of the chocolate mixture. Mix it in just until it's combined. And then repeat the process until all the ingredients are added. Once you add in the last of the dry ingredients, you don't want to overmix the batter or you'll end up with a tough cake. It's totally fine if there's still lumps. Then working quickly, divide the batter evenly into the prepared pans and smooth out the tops. The baking powder and baking soda will start activating once the batter is complete. So you want to get the cakes into the oven as soon as possible so they come out as light as possible. Then just place them into the oven and bake them for about 20 to 25 minutes or until a toothpick inserted into the center comes out clean. Once the cakes are done, remove them from the oven and let them cool completely. To make the cherry compote filling, you'll need to drain two 24-ounce jars of dark pitted cherries. If you're having trouble finding jarred cherries, I'll also show you how to make it using frozen cherries too. So just drain out the juice and place the cherries into a large saucepan. Then measure out half a cup of the drained juice and add it into the saucepan and measure out another half a cup of the drained juice and set it aside. We'll use it to make a cherry syrup later. Then into the saucepan add in the sugar, cornstarch, and lemon zest and place it onto the stove over a medium heat. Stir the ingredients to combine them and heat it until the mixture boils and becomes thick and clear. This will take about 5 to 10 minutes. Then remove it from the heat and pour it into a separate bowl and let it cool completely. 
To make it using frozen cherries, start by adding the frozen cherries into the saucepan. Add in a little bit of water and place the saucepan over a medium heat. Stir the ingredients to combine them and cover it and heat it until it starts to boil. Stirring it occasionally to ensure even heating. And once it's ready, remove it from the heat and strain out the liquid. Add the cherries back into the saucepan along with half a cup of the strained liquid and set aside another half a cup for the syrup later and just add in the same ingredients that was used before and heat it the same way as we did before. It won't take as long because the cherries are already hot. To make the cherry syrup, take the reserved half a cup of cherry juice and add it into a small saucepan and add in the sugar and heat it on the stove until it boils and the sugar has dissolved. Then remove it from the heat and set it aside to cool. Now to make the whipped cream frosting in a small saucepan, add the cornstarch and sugar. Whisk them together to combine them and add in half a cup of the heavy cream and whisk them together and place it over a medium heat until it thickens, whisking it constantly so you don't get any lumps. And once it's thick, remove it from the heat and let it cool completely. You can place it into the fridge to speed up that process. Then in a large bowl, add in the rest of the heavy cream and whip it until it forms a soft peaks. And add in the cooled paste from before and continue whipping it until it forms a stiff peaks. Try not to over whip it because you don't want the mixture to split. It's ready when you lift the beaters and the peaks hold their shape well. Then add some of the whipped cream into a piping bag fitted with a star piping tip and set it aside for now. And also use a vegetable peeler to shave some chocolate into a bowl. By now the cakes should be cooled completely. So run a butter knife around the edges to loosen them from the pans. Turn them out of the pans. Remove the parchment paper from underneath and place them onto another sheet of parchment paper. And trim the tops to level them out and so it absorbs the syrup better. And just repeat that for the rest of the cakes. Then to assemble the cake, spread a little bit of the whipped cream frosting onto your serving plate. Add your first cake layer on top, making sure it's centered. And brush on some of the cherry syrup. This is to add flavor to the cake and also keep it moist. And spread a thin layer of the whipped cream frosting onto it. And use the whipped cream to pipe a border around the edges. And add in about a third of the cherry compote filling. I'm choosing to go with the jarred cherry option. And just repeat the process for the next cake layer. Then add the last cake layer upside down on the top because the bottom is completely flat which would give you a really flat top. Then brush on more of the cherry syrup and cover the entire cake in the whipped cream frosting. Don't worry about how smooth it is and don't worry if there's a bunch of crumbs showing. And pat the shaved chocolate all around the sides of the cake. Scrape any excess back into the bowl and continue adding more until all the sides are covered in the chocolate and use a wet paper towel to clean off the cake plate. Then any remaining whipped cream frosting just add it into the piping bag. 
and pipe swirls all around the top edges of the cake and pipe a shell border around the bottom sides of the cake and top the cake with some maraschino cherries and add the rest of the cherry compote filling on top of it and if you're not going to be serving this cake within an hour or two make sure you store it in the fridge until you do and that's how to make a black forest cake I hope you enjoyed this video and I have so many more on my channel so be sure to check them out and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.